So we're just gonna add this at the beginning of the video. Uh, we seen uh, the previous video that we did with the Corrado, we seen a lot of new subscribers. So I wanna thank everyone for subscribing. And with that being said, if you could just comment below how you found us. Was it through a Facebook group or through our Instagram or other people's Instagram? Anything that uh, you can provide us for how you found us would be great to know. So just add it below, enjoy the video. What's up guys, it's Sunday, beautiful day out and I'm deciding to spend my day in the garage. Reasoning for that is the last track day, super fun day, Kayla's car worked great all day, uh, the Mark 1 worked great most of the day, um, really good times, everything else. If you didn't check out that video, I'm sure we can link it above here. Anyway, we ran into some issues towards the end of the day with my Mark 1. That sounds broke. Sounds like it's down a hole. So last week, uh, I came home during lunch one day, tossed new coil packs in it to see if that was any sort of a issue. Still was misfiring on what it looked to be just one or two cylinders. So that wasn't it. Dave came over, we tried new plugs in it, and then we scanned it. Nothing was really coming up that was really obvious anyway. So we did a compression test yesterday and found out that cylinder number three uh, has zero compression. So first things up is I'm gonna take the front end off the car, jack it up, drain the oil, drain all the fluids, and uh, start taking the head off really. All right, as the oil drains, as you can see, I got the front end off the car. It makes it a lot easier to work on. It's a little bit different than a regular Mark 1 where the rad support's all welded in. I designed it this way to make everything easy to work on because you never know exactly when you're gonna have to do something like this. So next step, uh, undo some more hoses, things like that, uh, enough to get the head off. All right, so fast forward probably not even two hours from start of coming in here, jacking the car up and getting everything ready to drain the fluids. Um, take off the downpipe, dump tube, all the intercooler piping, pretty much everything to the point where I'm at now. I took the head bolts out, uh, it's ARP, well actually I should say studs, so I took the studs out themselves so when I lift the head off I don't have to come all the way up to come out because I did leave the turbo and manifold hooked up as well as the intake manifold. I kind of want to just take that off as one. So next up I'm just waiting for a friend to come over to give me a hand lifting the head off and uh, putting on a couple blocks of wood. So as you can see Everything's just disconnected now. Uh, it's to the point of just taking it off and taking a look to see what's wrecked. So totally didn't grab the footage of taking the head off. It was a little bit of struggle. Kale and I uh, managed to muscle it off. So it was like two seconds ago. To our surprise, no hole in the piston, no burnt up valve or anything like that. It looks like uh, probably dropped a keeper. We'll be able to tell here shortly. Um, so next step, I guess, is take the cams out. But what I'm gonna do, um, I didn't know exactly where I was gonna stand with upgrades with this. Since it's a part and we gotta replace a valve, we might as well do exhaust valves because they're known to be a weak point anyway. Uh, we'll do valve springs as well, and that way we'll be able to rev this thing to about 8,000 RPM. So it's a catch-22, a little bit disappointing, um, but it happens really. So, you know, you push a car and doesn't see any road miles. It just goes from here to the track, gets beat on and comes back. So we're probably pushing this a little bit harder than what it should have been anyway. Um, so great time for upgrades. All the cam caps are off. I'm just gonna pull the cams out and take the lifters up out of there and see if there's a keeper out of place. That one there look, <laughs> looks a little out of place. Might as well pull this one first because obviously this is the one that... No, keepers are still in place. Let me go around here. Big old man noises. No. The bent one. The bent one. Oh. Oh. That's. <laughs> She's broke. That would do it. Keepers are still in place. Um, again, maybe over rev or something hit and. Uh, broke that valve right off so hopefully the guides are fine and we can just put some new valves in it yep uh, broke uh, broke the tip right off or so it's uh I like upgrades upgrades are good it's uh as Dave would say it's only money so Marco it's only it's only money yeah. your your car might have to wait for some upgrades all right, so it's a few days later after I started tearing this thing apart. And of course, like anything, everything starts to snowball a little bit and we're doing quite a few upgrades now. So just to get you up to speed, uh, bent valve, 
can see here it's got a nice little twist to it so basically what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be pulling the um, all the valves out of the head uh, getting it ready for the new valves that I have coming we're going to do valve springs as well so we can rev this thing a lot higher as I already said a couple times now also going to pull the pistons out and redo the rings because since we're this far we might as well and we're going to redo the um, uh, the rod bearings as well with some race bearings so one little thing I mean we could have probably put just a regular stock valve back in that ran the rest of the season and been fine but since we're into it for this much might as well keep going and that way hopefully we won't have any failures in the future fingers crossed see i got all the valve springs out all ready for the new valves to come in and springs and i also dropped the pan and ended up running into a few issues with some pan bolts being stripped so had to get the drill out for that which made me real happy and uh anyway it's off now pistons are ready to pull out all right so i don't know where i left off with this but a uh, little bit of a change of plans and i'll show you why uh, it looks like the cylinders are a little more scored than <clears throat> what i was thinking they were and reasoning for that is quite possibly because uh this thing sees some pretty high i mean by high g-force in the corners it's not that much but still enough that i don't have a baffled pan as you can see it's just an open pan so I think it might have starved a little bit in some of the corners over the couple of years of beating on this thing. So yesterday I ended up stripping another block that we had at the shop. I have it honed, I have the rings redone for the cylinders and them on the pistons. I'm going to build the rest of that tomorrow and we're going to take this engine out and put the new one in. So no messing around with this at all, just going to go all new, all fresh and go from there. Kind of frustrated. More work than what I figured. You know, when first getting into this, I was like, oh, I'll just head off. And then I was at the shop yesterday. I was like, oh, not a whole lot of work. And then I was like, maybe I should get this out just to save a little bit of time. And then I realized, oh, all the accessories and everything you have to swap over, that all takes time. And then putting it all back takes even more time. So time attack in what? So I missed the one time attack, if you didn't know. Uh, Kayla bought me another car, which you know, but we're not showing you guys that yet. It all takes time, so I'm glad I kind of dug into this tonight. And um, But it's a lot more work than what I really wanted to get into tonight. So anyway, I'm going to keep bugging around with this, and hopefully the next time you see this, it'll be on the, on the ground. All right. This is all stuff that would have been easier back when the car was still together. That was stubborn. Said no, 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 it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's not fine. I might need to pump the brakes. Oh, you're videoing. I need you to hold my watch your toes. This honestly just has fing sketchy written all over it. Like, I don't even know what I'm gonna do when I get it out. And because of the magic of YouTube, so it only took like what, a couple minutes? Oh, it's out. It's where I want it to be. So, that's not how I suggest taking one an engine out of this car. However, this is all basically junk, so I don't really care how it came out. It didn't fall on the ground. I'm not using anything out of this crank, oil pump, nothing. Basically, just using the accessories and the transmission the clutch of course in the mounts so it's out and now i'm going to call it quits for the night i think and we're going to go in and eat and have maybe another beer or two why is this here clayton well tell us about it <laughs> so the last thing you saw was kale and i fighting this thing out of the car all accessories off and ready to come over here so since then i filmed nothing because I was in a rush to try to get this back together and then a couple things snowballed which we'll talk about um, nothing major Sweet. really yeah nothing major held us up all the parts were good and everything went fairly smooth with it it's just like anything plans change and upgrade time for the better this time yeah so so upgraded exhaust valves upgraded springs which is going to be super nice at the track yep so super tech valves exhaust valves yep. super tech springs and retainers yep bigger injectors yep still might want to go bigger yet we'll see 
Um, well, since the plan, this was the biggest we had planned going staying with Eurodyne. Yeah. However, there's some changes. Yeah, so we're going to put standalone on it now. Um, so we'll have another video when that's all getting, you know, set up and on the dyno and all that stuff. But this car for a long time, it obviously we've talked about it before, but it's uh, ran Eurodyne, which has been great for what we originally were doing. But as Clayton and myself get faster and faster in the car and we do more handling stuff to it and all that, it kind of needs a little bit better uh, uh, fueling system. So, you know, we'd like to be able to monitor a whole bunch of different things that we just can't do with that Maestro, especially being an AEB setup that was originally on it. All right, so a couple of upgrades, uh, manual tensioner, oh, yeah. sort of need it with uh, with the higher rods just so the hydraulic tensioner doesn't start floating. We need race bearings for the rods. Yeah. Um, Re-ringed it. Right, yeah, re-ringed it. It was, Clayton already mentioned, but it dropped a valve. So the block wasn't super awesome. I had another 1AT block here. I always try to keep at least one of every engine I can on deck for things like this. So clean block, honed, new rings, um, all the valve trains done, the tensioner, and um, I don't know, this is a GT3071. It would have been on the all-wheel drive conversion car way back in the day. Yep. And IE uh, fuel rail, uh, stock fuel pressure regulator. That's all stuff that was from before. Though. From before, yeah, we're not, this just kind of going over because I don't think we ever really went through full specs of what was on this thing because yeah. there's been no dyno footage or anything like that of the car which exactly. we're going to have soon so and what about this oh yeah so kind of well, touched on that before but that's a familiar color to us maybe not anybody on the channel because we've never seen the car on the channel before yeah no so it's painted an oddball orange color but Clayton maybe can add some this came out of my mark one the engine that's in my drag car originally came out of my mark one yeah old guys like you on the internet might remember it yeah being around so silly, silly rabbit. rabbit it was uh on the cover of pvw i uh, used to torture it uh, we'll add some drag racing clips and stuff like that and it's probably the only videos i have of that car lots of photos clayton wanted some nice photos too yeah um, so this has a Pelican diff in it and stock gears, um, uh, but we rebuilt already, what, two years ago? Oh, we did this one? I forgot. Yeah. yeah. Remember I wrecked this and right. Kayla's? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's got to go back on, obviously. Uh, I built this intake manifold, like, I don't know how long ago. It's got, a, it's an AEB head, so it uses the AEB lower portion of the intake. I shortened it up and, uh, the rest is just cobbled together stuff for a grassroots race car. Yep. Really? Wannabe race car. Wannabe, yeah, exactly. Wannabe <laughs> race car driver. Yeah. So we got um, just a couple more things to really put on. I just have to, uh, I'm going to do the rear main seal, but we have to get it off the engine stand first. And oh, one thing we didn't talk about, the oil pan. Yeah. yeah. So I made, uh, one day when Dave was busy, I played with some cardboard and made sort of like a baffle. It's not done. There's no doors or anything in it, so don't judge too much yet. But uh Anyway, I made a little bit of a baffling for that, so that's going to be next to my, my to-do list to get that done so we can get the pan on, get the engine back in the car, get the wiring done. Stand, stand on, on, on the out, dyno. Still lots dyno. to do, for sure. And the time attack is in a week and two days or three days. Oh, it's going to be tight. Be real tight. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're going to have some cool content coming with the Mark 1, for sure, once it gets on the dyno, see what we can make for power. At I least on the dyno, I might not see any track footage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe not. Uh, what did we make on this thing before? Touching like three? three? Just or over no. 306 or something? Well, we could look. Yeah, let's look. Okay. Ready for Yeah, we found the file. Yeah, so 307. And I don't remember what boost it was, but I know it wasn't crazy. Maybe 20 pounds or something like that mm -hmm. for that turbo. Yep. Um, but with more RPM, all the other things that we have to come, it should make bit more power the manifold on it will restrict it a bit but um, we don't even really use this power at the track no, at so. the track we're not even yeah we're not even at 300 but right. we'll have more functionality and make things a little bit easier with the standalone to be able to do like boost per mile an hour and stuff like that we did have the ability to do boost per gear with the pexy controller that was in it which we never set up but it was all um everything was separate from itself so switching to standalone now 
it'll all be housed into one easily controllable system. So um, there'll and be really, basically no gauges in the car anymore, nothing. Everything's coming out yeah. because Stanley's going to replace it all. And so. really at the track, you can't pay attention or I can't pay attention to any of that stuff anyway. Yeah. Honestly, I'm not looking at any gauges. Yeah. Let the ECU do it. Yeah, for and sure. And just to be able to rev the car out to, what are you going to rev it to? Probably 82. Yeah. That's It'll be strictly be for shifting in the power band because the turbo is not going to make steam up there yeah but as i mentioned to you before we're rambling in this video but as i mentioned to clayton before we can i'll be able to ramp boost up so even though the turbo may be falling out of its efficiency range if we made 20 pounds of boost um before i could crank the boost up between you know 6500 and 8000 to maybe 25 pounds of boost to keep the power continuing up. So those are all the tricks you can do with the with standalone. So I'm excited. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. Yeah. So um, what else are we gonna talk about this thing? No, we're not gonna talk. Not talk about yet. this. No. Yeah. We'll yeah it's it. a bunch. There's a couple of things we're not gonna talk about from this week. So like I was saying earlier, it's getting this thing back together. I didn't film a whole lot while I was doing it. I know setting up a time lapse doesn't take that long or trying to film, but when you're in the mindset of trying to get something done really quick, I was it's always tough. well, I was always at to the point too of like, oh, I'll just I'll set it up for the next thing I do, and that just never happens. So I do apologize about that, but we're gonna have plenty of other engines that we're gonna be doing valves on or you know yeah, different drivers. We're not here to show you how to build an engine or anything like no, that. We're it, just showing you. It would have been more entertaining than looking at me or Dave. So. Mm, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> I think it would be. Okay, so is that it for this one? I think that's it for this one. So, like we always say. Yeah, thanks. Or yeah, any questions or comments? Oh, yeah. Ask them below. Ask them below. And um, if you have any, or no, don't forget to like and subscribe. Oh, good one. Yeah, yeah. And see you in the next video. Yeah. See, see you in the you next one. Oh, oh, geez. Oh, no. Cut. Kayla, stop recording. Ugh. Any beer companies out there who want to help us out a little bit? Uh, this project's pretty much fueled on beer.